Kia ora koutou. We're doing something a bit different today. We've gotten out of the office and we're going for a spin in a fully electric car. That's right, there's no petrol, there's no fumes, there's no tailpipe. This is a Nissan Leaf and with me is Sigurd Magnussen from the Better New Zealand Trust. Now at the moment you might have heard that a fleet of electric cars are driving from Cape Ranga to Bluff to raise awareness about electric vehicles. Let's hear more. So tell me Sigurd, what got you into electric vehicles in the first place? Uh, there was a lot of reasons. I mean the main one really was environmentally. Um, our transport is responsible for 20% of our carbon emissions and so I was really fascinated about ways to improve how that works in New Zealand. Do the costs actually stack up? Is it economic to own an electric vehicle? Um, there's two parts to the economics of electric vehicles. They do cost more up front. So my one was a little bit over 20 grand but then they're effectively free once you bought them. You know, I've driven about 5,000 Ks for around $100 of electricity. What? So it's effectively free? Yeah, I mean, if I buy $5 of coffee, uh, you know, in the morning, that's about my week's worth of uh, fuel. How far are you driving each day? Um, I commute uh, reasonably frequently from Lower Hutt to Wellington, so that's about a 40, 50 kilometer uh, daily journey. That is quite a saving on the petrol bill. Yeah, it really is. And I think the only issue for New Zealanders is that we're actually also quite used to maybe even spending five or ten thousand uh, dollars on a car, a petrol car. Um, or if we are in a fleet sort of position, you know, we still might be uh, spending less money than a, what an electric car might cost up front. So, you know, that's really the only issue that we have here in New Zealand. So what about the range issues? You know, some people complain that uh, electric vehicles don't go as far. Uh, well, for me, I mean, right now we've got 121 kilometres. So that's well, you know, in excess of what I would be driving every day. Um, and so, you know, I, I've read reports saying AA, you know, expect people drive 20, 30 k's a day. So the range is not an issue for 99% of your journeys. And what about road trips? So right now there's a rollout of fast chargers up and down the country and so that will allow you to drive in a short range electric vehicle up and down the country or you can buy a plug-in hybrid and, and do those long distances using petrol. So when do you reckon we'll start to see more electric vehicles on the road in New Zealand? Well we've already seen a doubling in the last months um, so it's already an exponential growth but um, really what we need to see happen in New Zealand is for some significant government package to come in and then we'll be catching up to other Western markets that are having really high penetration of EVs. What's being done in other countries? Well Norway is really interesting, they're a tall slender country of similar population, uh, lots of renewable generation uh, and they've had incentives for years. So for example uh, the purchase price, if you buy a petrol car uh, you'll spend at least 20,000 Kiwi on a, a fee basically to buy a, uh, the pollution. Um, whereas if you buy an electric car you don't pay for that. You also don't pay for the sales tax. So you're actually having tens of thousands of dollars worth of uh, price differential between a petrol car uh, and an electric car in Norway. And so that means that for example now Norway you're seeing almost 30% of car sales each month now be plug-in cars. What about fleets of cars like for you know for businesses and rentals what can be done to encourage them to use electric vehicles? For fleets to pick up EVs it's really the same thing that purchase price has to come down so that uh, the fleet owner can look at it purely on financial terms and see thousands of dollars worth of cost savings during the cost of ownership of that vehicle and then if there are environmental benefits and other benefits uh, then those are bonus points but most fleet owners can't look at the environmental gains as a justification. Am I right in thinking this, this car recharges when it's braking or, or going downhill? Absolutely, so you know just going around the roundabout now and uh, as I went to slow down to look at the traffic uh, I would have been recharging a little bit there. Uh, the most significant example I've had of this is driving over the Rimmer Tuckers from Wellington into the Wairarapa Rapper, and down the Wairarapa Rapper side I gained more than 10% of my battery back. What? So it made it to the Rapper okay? Oh, so I went from Lower Hutt to Featherston and back. I've had it uh, a couple of days and I wanted to test it out and so it was a really cool trip. 
Where do you normally charge the car and how's it different from using a petrol? Yeah, I mean that was probably the biggest difference that I found from what I thought would be the case to what was reality. So when I looked to buy the car, I was looking all around for places to recharge and, and there really wasn't all that many. Um, and then I realised now that I've had the car for months, um, that it's actually not too big an issue for me because 99% of the time I'm charging at home. And in the other 1% I'm charging when I'm out and about. And that 1% is really important, but it's more like an insurance policy. So that's very different to a petrol car where you have to go out to recharge. Finally, I hear you've got a bit of an electric vehicle road trip coming up. Tell us about that. So over April, uh, have a look out for electric vehicles. There's going to be a number driving from Cape Reunga down to Bluff. Uh, go to facebook.com slash leading the charge. Uh, it's organised by a number of owners of electric vehicles and we want to get out there and show New Zealanders that these cars are out there and that they're awesome. So that's what happens when economists do top gear. Thanks Sigurd Magnusson and uh, listen to the sound of this vehicle, you can barely hear it. Shh.